Good morning. We are ready for Bible to continue into Proverbs 11 today on this Tuesday, April the 28th. And we are going to start here um, in chapter 11 with verse 1. A false balance is abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. So false balance, think about what a balance is used for. It's for weighing things out, but um, more particularly, it would have been used in weighing like money and things that they were buying. So being honest here, a false balance is an abomination, meaning um, awful, against God, something that he would consider um, an offense or a sin. So a false balance being tricky. But a just or fair weight is his delight. Um, this also makes me think about um, the gospel in the way that it almost seems like me being accepted in front of God is not fair. That somehow I am getting something that I don't deserve. Well, that would not be a just weight. That would be a false balance. But it is a just weight because Jesus is in my place. So it's not a false balance. Me being weighed before the Lord is actually accurate because Jesus is being weighed for me and he meets all the requirements. So it would be an abomination to him to accept me otherwise. But Jesus has actually stepped in and made it his delight, made it a fair weight because he has stood on the scales in my place, so to speak. Two, when pride cometh, then cometh shame, but with the lowly is wisdom. So remember the poem I read you yesterday about the know-nothing newbies and they knew nothing and they were proud of it and wanted to say it? That is where shame should come in. But with the lowly, the ones that humble themselves, there's wisdom. This does not mean poor, like as money-wise, lowly. Doesn't automatically follow that someone who's poor is wise. But someone who is humble is wise because they recognize that God is above them. Verse 3. The integrity, and integrity is the worth of something. And when we talk about integrity of people, it's talking about your true worth. What is your, in if you have integrity, you have a worthiness of someone who can be trusted when no one is looking. You're not going to um, trick me. You're not going to deceive me. Um, you're honest. The integrity of the upright shall guide them, but the perverseness of transgressors shall destroy them. So integrity and perverseness is actually the opposite. If something has integrity, it is what it is all the way through. So it's true wood. It's true whatever. It has integrity all the way through. If something is perverse, it may have like a wood overlay, but it might be something different underneath. It's like trying to deceive someone on the outside. So that will only destroy the ones who are acting like something they're not. And the integrity of a person will actually lead them and guide them. Riches profit not in the day of wrath. Okay, so when it comes time to judgment, when you're standing before God, riches are not going to do you any good. You can pile your money up there. Oh God, look what I earned. Look what I did. And it's not going to mean anything. But righteousness delivereth from death. But the fact that I am righteous, and it's not coming, remember, from my own actions, it's coming from Jesus' righteousness, is what is delivering me from death. Five, the righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way, but the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. So remember when we see perfect, don't be frightened and say, oh, well, this isn't me because I'm not perfect. That's true. It's not you because you're not perfect. But we are perfect. Why? Because Jesus was perfect for us. And he has given us that perfection. So 
Jesus' righteousness, it is, is what is directing us. Remember, he is the way and the truth and the life. Okay, But the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. Just himself leading the wicked will lead him into destruction. He won't need anyone else to do it for him. Six, the righteousness of the upright shall deliver them. But transgressors shall be taken in their own naughtiness. So do you see how these two go just hand in hand? The righteousness of the perfect shall direct his ways. The righteousness of the upright shall deliver them. Saint direct, deliver, kind of same idea. But the wicked will fall by his own wickedness. But transgressors will be taken in their own naughtiness. It's the same. It's two verses right after another repeating each other, which makes us pay attention because the writer has done it on purpose. Whenever someone repeats himself, especially one after another, it shows this is important. We need to pay attention. Seven, when a wicked man dieth, his expectations shall perish. Whatever he was hoping for dies with him. And the hope of unjust men perisheth. Same, it's repeating itself. When the wicked dies, his hope dies with him. And the hope of men, hope of an unjust man, perishes. So it's repeating itself. Eight, the righteous is delivered out of trouble. And the wicked cometh in his stead. So this goes back to these two other verses. The righteousness is delivered. The righteousness is delivered out of trouble. And the wickedness, wicked cometh in his stead, meaning the wicked stead. He is coming right into his own way. A hypocrite with his mouth destroys his neighbor. So this goes back to not having integrity. If you are saying something that is not true, it will destroy your neighbor, but through knowledge shall the just be delivered. So a hypocrite is only saying lies. It says a hypocrite with his mouth destroys his neighbor. So lying, saying something that is untrue, but through knowledge he will be delivered. The truth is what sets us free. The truth is what sheds light on what is there. 10. When it goeth well with the righteous... The city rejoiceth, and when the wicked perish, there is shouting. So if the righteous are, are being elevated and are doing well, everyone is happy in that because they know that that person is going to try to do what's right. But when the wicked dies, everyone shouts. They're excited because now they know they have some freedom because they are not going to be oppressed anymore. So it's showing the um, comparison of how these two types of people would rule and be in charge and how everyone would feel about it. But the by the blessing of the upright, the city is exalted. See, they know that if the upright is exalted, that their city is going to do well. But it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. If someone who is wicked is speaking and is in charge, it's going to destroy everyone. The all of these verses show us that the wicked are leading themselves to destruction and they're taking everybody with them. He that is void means empty of wisdom, despiseth his neighbor. So not just hate, but lowers his neighbor. Doesn't give his neighbor the appropriate worth. Despises him. But a man of understanding holdeth his peace. If I am wise... I'm going to keep my mouth shut. I'm going to hold my peace. And the idea too is I can keep my peace. I can keep it. A table, a tail bearer, a liar, reveals secrets. But he that is of a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. Does this mean that I hide something that's important? No, it doesn't mean it, but it doesn't mean I lie about things and I'm not I'm not hiding things that are true about myself. A tale bearer reveals secrets. Okay? Or secrets about other people. Secrets about himself. But who has a faithful spirit keeps his mouth shut. How many times have we seen this idea already 
of speaking or not speaking, showing that you're wise. Where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. I love this verse. This is the idea that sometimes we think, well, I need to make my own decisions. I don't want to ask somebody what I should do. I can make, I can make it. I know what to do. But this says, where there's no counsel, people fall. Where there's no advice. But if you have lots of counselors, there's safety there. Remember, there are lots of times you're going to be going through things for the first time. There are people who have already been there, done that, have experience, and can help you. How many times have we seen here that the wise listen, the wise take advice, the wise value um, instruction, and know what it's worth? So if you have counselors, if you have wise people around you, parents, teachers, people at church, listen to them. They are there for a reason. They have earned just by their years the right for you to listen to them. And they are um, concerned for you. They're not just telling your parents and teachers are not just telling you what to do so that they can have someone to boss. They love you and are concerned for you. And now your job as a wise person, and you can still be wise now, is to listen to them. And that's cool, is to show yourself wise even now. Don't wait till you're older. You can be wise now, or you can absolutely show yourself to be a fool. Let's pray for God's help. God, we love you, and our hearts do desire to be wise people. We do not want to be fools. We don't want to always be falling and always be messing up and always needing... Um, needing to be picked up. We want to be wise. We pray that you would guide us and lead us in that, that you would give us hearts that would truly desire you and seek your good and your best instead of our own. We um, ask for guidance. We ask for um, control of our tongue, and especially during this time where we're at home and among the same people all the time, that you would Help us to be wise with our words and to not be careless with what we say. That we would be thinking about them even more so than normal and be careful about what we say. I pray that you would help us and lead us to trust you, to lean on you, to lean on your guidance and trust you in your wisdom because you are the source of all wisdom. We thank you for a new day and ask you ask that you would help us to live it well. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a wonderful day.